Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm standing outside the church of St. Alphonsus Liguri, known here in St. Louis as the Rock Church for its uh, stone spire and the rock walls that surround the property. Inside this church is a 1935 Wix organ, unlike anything else I've ever seen before. Now, in the early 20th century, all things European and English were exciting. I mean, in 1927, E.M. Skinner brought uh, G. Donald Harrison over from the Willis shop in England to work for him. Not to be outdone, Kilgan here in St. Louis hired Willis's grandson, Henry Vincent Willis, to come work for them. That didn't last very long as he was hired away by the Wix Organ Company in 1934. At that time, the instrument for this church was almost done. It was being assembled in the shop and was almost ready for installation. So Willis didn't have anything to do with the design and uh, voicing of this instrument. However, once it was delivered to the church, he oversaw the tonal finishing and is responsible for the sounds we hear today. They later replaced one reed rank and Willis was responsible for voicing that rank. Willis worked for Wix for about five years until the outbreak of World War II. This led to a series of instruments that we refer to as Willis Wix organs. One of the first and most important is in the church behind me, so let's go take a look. So joining us here at the organ today is Dr. Horst Buchholz. Horst, thank you so much for coming in and uh, helping to demonstrate this wonderful instrument from 1935. Are you, are you familiar with this? Um, I have been here once, and that is probably about seven or eight years ago. Okay, so, uh, so. I, I might get to show you some things about this instrument. Right, this I'd is, be uh, delighted. This is one of my favorite organs in the city. Um, as we said, Henry Vincent Willis did a lot of the voicing on this, and one of the really distinctive sounds are the diapasons. Uh, and we have three big diapasons that are great. Uh, so that's probably a good place to start. Uh, tell me, tell me what we've got here. Okay, we have an open diapason eight foot, and uh, that's usually the first one that first I start with here. Right. First open. Mm -hmm. feature of this instrument is a lot of the great pipes are enclosed in their own expression. Okay. Yes. And interestingly enough, that first open diapason is under expression. So show me how we can, what we can do with that expression. We can modify that a little bit. So uh, here was our diapason. I'm just going to close the box on it. Uh, continue on through the grate and everything else in the principal course is exposed it's out here behind the facade right mm -hmm. so, yes so show me what we got we have a second open diapason let's just compare that since we just heard the first one slightly different scale and you can almost hear at the console see uh, or hear that they are in different locations okay. well we hear that one almost sounds bigger because it's right above our heads whereas the the other one's a little farther back, but out in the room it probably sounds a little, a little different from over here. Right. Let's see how these two uh, uh, pair with the octave four, or right. if there's any difference. Uh, um, so here's the second, which we just heard, with the octave four. Switch 
switching to number one. They both work very well as long as that, that uh, first open has the shades open, so you're getting the full effect. Getting the full effect, and uh, we can already see that the tuning is much better with the second. Uh, they, uh, we should also add, it's a warm, kind of sweaty day. In uh, uh, rather, so the organ yes. has been tuned, but it's hard in the middle of summer to keep things absolutely perfect, especially with express, expressive pipes and unexpressive. And that is typical of St. Louis, yeah. So, <laughs> so you have some options. If one's a little out of tune, you yeah, can go yeah. with the other one. But we also, in the facade, have this big 16-foot open diapason. Usually, this surprised me, and a lot of times when you have a 16-foot manual diapason, that is the second diapason. Mm -hmm. Here, it's completely independent. We have these three separate diapasons out here. Let's hear the 16. Right. And uh, when we go down from the top here... Full sounding yeah. bass octave here. Yeah, and that's nice. also available in the pedal. It's a big warm sound, but it's got some brightness and edges, and it's, mm -hmm. it's prompt. It really it, it speaks quickly, so it's, yeah. uh, it's like fluffy there. So, how's that if we put on the 16 and then the 8 and 4 together? Um, I think we'll try to do the uh, um, second open since they're both uh, out of the out in the open, <laughs> the open now in the open, and here's a four foot and uh, it's 1684. And we also have a two foot uh, 15 here. Uh, let's add that. And then uh, on top of that, I'm going to add the 12th. four-foot octave coupler to that registration since we do not have a mixture here in the grade. And you had a story. Well, uh, yeah, I, I was able to read some of the uh, history of this organ, thanks especially to our friend Christopher Sower, uh, who sent me some letters and things about this. The, the, the organist here wanted a mixture on the grade, and the Wicks organ company said, you don't need one. You're just accompanying singers. You've got a two-thirds two, or two, or two -thirds and a two-foot. You need super couplers. It'll be plenty bright. And I think he's right. I think you could get a full congregation in here. Uh, that would have that been sufficient. Yeah. But we certainly have more stops and more sounds if we needed it to be louder and brighter. So uh, from there we have some, some softer things that are in the great box. What else do we have there? Uh, we have a wonderful doppel flute here. That's, uh, I think, one of my favorite stops on this organ. strings we have a viola da gamba just uh, as a little uh, uh, um, sidebar I usually uh, use that often uh, in combination with the diapasons to give the diapasons a little more uh, overtone and so here is the viola da gamba with that second open We also have a gemshorn here. Mm -hmm. 
and one of our one, two, three celestes in the organ, a gemstone celeste. some of the other color stops in the other division. And under expression. One of the letters that uh, was in the file referred to that as a churchly sound. It would be aye, useful aye, for yeah. having a church sound. So and we'll that explain. was one of the ecumenical uh, sounds, I think, that uh, you found in every <laughs> denomination. <laughs> you don't usually find it on the great with the Celeste. No, definitely it's not. A different, it's a much smoother string sound than some of the other strings. Yeah. Find, so, yeah. uh, we have a flute harmonic here for, at four foot pitch also. I'm going to play that alone and then with the double flute. Uh, expression so it can be closed down right. uh, uh -huh. as needed so that's wonderful now we also have a big tuba in the range. we have a pretty big tuba i have uh, a story about this um originally just a normal uh upright tuba and it's all exposed out here it's the only reed that's outside and uh, they were getting so much coal dust from the heat here in the room that the reeds kept getting stopped up so they actually replaced this this is not the original 1935 tuba this is a 1939 tuba uh, that was voiced by henry vincent willis and it has hooded resonator so the dust won't get down into it um, so and it's it's a lovely stop in here some wonderful sounds well and, and a lot of people think the uh, hooded uh, resonators also are like in between uh, the regular uh, uh, trumpet and the shaman mm -hmm. because it does project the sound uh, in a slightly different direction it does but I can well. I can attest that they're not all exactly pointed directly oh, out because okay, they don't yeah. fit on the chest that way <laughs> <laughs> okay here's our lovely tuba Now, there's one thing we, we haven't talked about yet. Before we go on, we probably should mention this. It's kind of the elephant in the room. Um, this is all original from 1935, save that 1939 read, but it has been restored because in 2007, this church got struck by lightning and had a fire. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. And the organ was saved, but it did have a lot of smoke damage and some water damage, so uh, the Wicks Organ Company took it all out. Everything was put back exactly like it was. It's all the original chest. There's new regulators and new winding. This console is brand new. Um, but I can tell you from having played the original organ, I, it looks just like the old console. They did a fantastic job of duplicating the 1935 console. Somebody's already said, well, it looks like a theater organ. Well, yeah. It's just that was a 1930s, 20s style Typical. Of console. Yeah. A lot of churches had consoles like this. They disappeared later when they got worn out, but they restored it perfectly. And I have to give the Wicks Organ Company a lot of credit. Yeah, also, I think the, the inside of the organ, and we'll see some pictures of that, uh, uh, is beautifully uh, clean and uh, I mean, it looks like a new organ. It does, but it's, uh, it's all the original parts, essentially. All the yeah. original pipes, nothing was changed or replaced. So, and they, all they did was cleaning it, they did no revoicing. So the sounds we're still hearing are 1935. Yeah. Uh, and they, they did a fantastic job repainting the pipes and doing the case. Inside and outside, yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, those have been cleaned, but they are still the original. So, let's come over to uh, the swell, which is um, right next to the grate up there in a, in a box that's up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what we've got in the swell. Well, uh, in the swell, uh, well, let's start again with our open diapason eight foot, perhaps. Four foot octave, uh, but we have two uh, stops at four foot uh, um, flauta traverso, which is uh, uh, pretty bold. So I'm just going to use that together now with the open diapason. Very uh, uh, 
gentle uh, octave uh, uh, replacement. It works well. And we have uh, uh, also a violina uh, uh, a forefoot, which is much brighter. Uh. It's another example, even though it's an octave higher, using the strings to brighten the diapason sound. You get, it's much brighter than yeah. even maybe a principal would be, but it's, it serves as that sort of function in this, in this division. Yeah, and you could probably use them together, the flute and the, the, the violin. I'm just going to play them uh, separately uh, briefly here. We have the flute together. They're perfectly in tune and they, they blend rather well, so you have a good substitute for a four-foot uh, uh, dive piece. I still would give that that string is adding something really unique to the sound of the organ. Those, Without those that flute, 1930 yeah, yeah. strings are, are just something unique uh, that we don't hear a whole lot of anymore. Well, continuing with strings, when we have two eight-foot strings, here we have the solicional, which is rather bright. Eolina. Very gentle. Box is still open. I'm going to question whether that's even going to be audible over the sound of the HVAC system in the room. Uh, that's, this is already going to be one of those situations where I'll get complaints because the music's not loud enough. That's because the range of the organ is so big. And I, so I haven't big. said this before, headphones, a good set of headphones is the best way to listen to these videos yeah. because that's how we produce them. Um, the sound you're hearing is exactly what we're hearing here in the room. Yeah, um, I mean, when, when I grew up in, in Germany uh, with mainly uh, uh, tracker organs uh, uh, and very few uh, uh, romantic organs, uh, uh, left or restored. So, and, and first came to the United States, I was uh, so impressed with these super uh, quiet sounds. And then, uh, if they're not quiet enough, you just close the box and they disappear. I mean, it's really like turning that volume knob uh, towards zero. I mean, that's what I feel here in this case with that theory. Right. And of course, there would have been no HVAC when the organ was no. put in. So it was nice to be able to take the organ from full organ down to literally nothing. And we have, since we're with the strings, we have a Celeste that actually works with both. We ha um, have a Celeste, uh, here, once the Celeste with the uh, Salicional. Now the Celeste with the Eolina. And I'm not going to close the box this time, <laughs> so we can actually hear what it Yeah, it works both ways. It's a very different yeah. kind of sound, but it works. Mm -hmm. We also have two eight-foot flutes, uh, a stop flute, which is the rather uh, um, healthy Borden. Then the Spitzflute, which is usually somewhat brighter and rather uh, 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 louder, but uh, in this case the Spitzflute is the softer stop. You added the stop flute. Can, does, does the spitz flute really add anything to the stop flute, or is the stop flute too big to, to be heard? I think, I think it does. I mean, uh, if we, let's, let's hear that. Uh, um, that was my impression, at least. Here's the stop flute. Not so much in the treble, but I think in the lower range, for sure. It's a little brightness. 
this truck. It's a little more overtone. The Smith's foot, I believe, is metal and tapered, very similar to the Gims horn. How do those compare with the Gims horn and the grade and the Smith's foot? I'm just curious. Oh, okay. It sounded kind of stringy no. in that same hybrid way. And since the uh, uh, the, the grade is uh, enclosed, we'll just try to reduce that Gims horn to the same uh, dynamics. Okay, here's the Gims horn. They are similar, huh? Yeah. Just a little bit more foundation, a little darker sound in the spit flute. It's more fluty, the Gims one is more stringy. Yeah. So they're both sort of hybrids. Though. Um, then we do have actually a, um, a number of mutations. So we have the 12th on the grade, where we said it's like a little substitute mixture. And we do have a Nazart here on the uh, swell as well. So, uh, Which is actually a borrow out of the 8 foot uh, stop flute. So it's just the 8 foot. Oh, uh, uh, rewired, huh? Yes. exact sort of effect that Wix was saying you could do with that and give it a, a quintadina sort of to, to, ah, yeah. to add mm -hmm. to your flute or even put it with the string and you get an orchestral oboe mm -hmm. effect uh, by adding that quint in there. It's not quite a perfect quint because it comes out of the equal temperament, but uh, it's, it's a good substitute. And then the two foot is actually borrowed from the four. Four for now. And then we have a, a mixture here of three rings, a harmonia ethereal. This is very interesting. So, um, okay, this is the bottom. without any uh, uh, repetition. Uh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's no breaks all the way through. This is very similar to the, what we heard in the Kimball organ in Guthrie, Oklahoma, uh, where there was a mixture uh, in the swell division, I believe, of three ranks with a tierce um, that really wasn't meant to be a, it's, it's not a principal chorus. It's a very mm -hmm. thin scale mixture, uh, and it kind of, it, it brightens up the strings and the flutes a little bit. It does. I mean, uh, let's hear that here uh, a little bit of the string chorus. The Salestinal was the violina. that. Almost sounds like they were yeah. meant to uh, uh, all together. Definitely not a mixture in, in no, our... No, it just uh, it adds those upper harmonics and that upper brightness. That exactly. Strings yeah. already. I mean, I use that uh, frequently with a, a very soft 16 foot uh, uh, underneath. So use the same strings with that uh, 16 foot board and I'll add, add the Schmitz foot also. Rager I was say, that's a uh, much more uh, Germanic, yeah, yeah, romantic yeah. sound than English, certainly. Yeah, yeah, it's, certainly. it's soft, but it's bright. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting thing to, to play with and see how it fits with the other colors. Yeah, we have uh, three eight-foot reeds here. Okay. So we're like uh, father, mother, child. Uh, so here's the uh, uh, cornopian, rather uh, um, bold. turned on the tremolo there. I should add, this organ has a lot of tremolos for just a four division organ. Um, there's actually three uh, in the swell. One of them is for all of the flute pipes. The other one's the one you turned on, which just trims the cornopian and the oboe. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more, and it's for our next read. It comes on automatically when you turn on the vox humana.
so the Vox Humana is never it's supposed never, to. It's, it's always so, trimming, which is good, I guess, because then you never have to worry about it's in tune. You can turn <laughs> off the trim to tune it, but you have to go inside the organ and actually flip a switch. Oh, really interesting. And so that, then you can tune uh, it, and yeah. then you turn it back on, and you and it won't be in tune anymore after that. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's three triple O's just for the swell division alone. And where, where where's the switch to turn it off? It's uh, actually in. It's on the tremolo box itself. Oh, so wow. when you go in to tune the organ, you can stop by and turn it off before you go. Well, that, that's something that you definitely need to know when you <laughs> yes. tune because why is this constantly shaking? Yeah. And then it, we skipped over, but there is actually a tremolo in uh, the grate for all of the things that are enclosed there. Exactly. Uh, so you can, you can add a tremolo to that. So that leaves us with the choir division, which is down here on the floor and actually kind mm -hmm. of the softest division because it's behind the case, um, and, yeah. uh, but full of wonderful colors. What is interesting, though, uh, and uh, um, I hope people can see the, uh, uh, the layout of this uh, rather unusual uh, um, uh, gallery, because you took some pictures, uh, I think, uh, very... I, thought, I was hanging out on one of those windows, yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, unless Brent bought a drone or something. No, no, I, I'm, uh, I just yeah. learned to fly. No, it's a no-fly zone, <laughs> usually Catholic churches, no, no drone. So uh, um, the organ console uh, um, is here, right in front of the case. And there's really very, very, very little oh, yes. space uh, between the case and the console, and also very little space to the sides. So uh, for the organ to accompany a choir, I mean, the, the singers would probably um, have to uh, be back uh, uh, further, unless you just have like five or six singer, singers. Well, uh, during COVID times, I think probably two singers would be fine, one right, one left. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's really tight up here. There's just enough space to walk between the console and the organ for one person there. I don't know how many singers they ever stuffed up here or how they got them up here. But, uh, well, I mean, certainly when the churches were built, I mean, this was uh, built by German immigrants, I, I believe. So, I mean, the choir uh, was a big thing uh, in, the, in the sacred music. And this wasn't the first organ in the building, so it's mm -hmm. possible that they had one that was a little smaller. Um, I, just a fun fact here, the, the um, Mother of Perpetual Help Novenas started here in this church, that weekly novena coming in. And in fact, there was a streetcar that brought people here just, they adjusted the schedule for that. Um, and this was supposed to be a two-manual organ, and they got so many donations because of all of those people coming in for the Mother of Perpetual Help that they raised enough money to make the organ bigger. So it's possible they weren't expecting it to come out this far. <laughs> Very possible, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, of course, I mean, if you have more singers to the sides, the question would be, is sure. the choir division really uh, uh, um, able to uh, Heard, I mean, by, by, by the singer, so that that's that's something. But it's here. Uh, uh, let's hear a little bit. We have uh, another eight foot diapason, of course. Violin diapason, more violin than diapason, I would almost say. Uh, um, let's add the uh, melodia. Uh, uh, let's say here the melodia alone once. So uh, that's definitely a very uh, mellow uh, uh, flute. Now, if you add that to the diapason, it will probably give it a little bit more uh, uh, foundation. A little bit more rounder. It fattens it up, but it's still very light. And I should add, this, this uh, division is all under expression. And you've got the box open. It's so wide open, yes. So, uh, 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 and then we have a viola. Let's compare that with the violin diapason. Almost closer than uh, than uh, than necessary. I'm just curious, what does it sound like compared to the great viola? Good question. Uh, the great viola gamba. Viola gamba. Uh -huh. So here's our uh, uh, viola. Viola da gamba. Both very rich yeah. in the overtones, but Brings definitely much, better, much yes, bolder. And of course, I don't know how much of that is because of where we're sitting. Being higher than the other, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. The, the similarities are there. But uh, thinking of the choir division primarily to accompany uh, a, a small group of singers, uh, uh, I mean, if you close this here, uh, um, 
I'm not sure how much of the singers <laughs> play here. I mean, if they sing loud enough, they definitely cannot hear the organ. Yeah, for a soloist, that might be all you need. Yeah, no right. <laughs> and then we have, uh, if you thought that was soft, <laughs> here's his softer. Here's your Dulciana. This was the box open. adjust your volume that is just that soft <laughs> at this point <laughs> and uh, shall we compare that once with our uh, super soft string the Oli Iolini here so here's the Dulciana again and I'll just open the boxes so we, so we can hear it the Iolini A little stringier in this well, the Aeolian. A little bit more, yeah. Which uh, I would expect a Dulciana being more principal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should add, normally in here they have a, a lovely little baptistry that was added a couple mm -hmm. of decades ago. And it has running water, so you get bubbling yes. water. We have it off right now. I, when I turned it off, I heard all sorts of things I'd never heard before because that adds that extra level of noise. Yes, so, yes. unfortunately, we, this is as quiet as we can get in the room today. Right, right now, yeah. We have one more Celeste, yes, and that's the uh, Undamaris here in, in the choir. That was the Undamaris. Lovely, I, but just so gentle. So gentle noise. that I had to add the uh, super and sub octave couplers there for a moment, and uh, it's just this very mystic uh, 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 sound. Beautiful. Well, then we have a uh, four and two foot flute. This is the same stop. It goes up to two foot. Uh, flute d'amour. Uh, flute d'amour. Foot with the eight foot uh, first. That four foot flute was the only thing Christopher Sor and I were discussing that could have possibly come from an earlier organ. He says everything else is Wix, obviously. Oh, interesting. That would possibly look a little strange, a little different, but it could just be mm -hmm. something they did. And then we have two reeds there. Uh, we have a French horn. Uh, letters from Wix refer to that as the aristocrat of the organ. <laughs> a very <n> <laughs> that's how they a, sold a, it. To polite the aristocrat, of it. <laughs> not the one that. It was a unique stop at the time. They were. A cell they had to make, so but I like it. It's a, it's a nice, oh, interesting uh, sound. Here. And then we have a, a clarinet here. Tremolo could use a little adjustment, but once again we have a tremolo just for those two reed stops, and yes. then one for the rest of the choir. So mm -hmm. you can, I suppose, have the rest of the stops not tremor, or I don't know why they would do that. Specifically. Yeah, that uh, um, must have been inexpensive to add that bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, uh, um, it means that the uh, wind supply for those ranks that are uh, uh, trembling, tremming, <laughs> tremulating. Uh, uh, that they are uh, must be separate from the uh, from the wind for the, for the rest. Yeah, of the and time. as we get in there and see, there's a lot of wind lines going around, a lot of tremolos based everywhere. Yeah. Well, over in the pedal division, I know we have um, three unique ranks. Everything 
generally is borrowed, but there are three uh, unique stops. The first one being the big open dive basin. That's a big open wood. That's in the big dive. open wood, yeah. Uh, uh, I hope that uh, comes out through, but you have a good microphone. So <laughs> here is the uh, open wood. And I think the octave is derived from that, that as well. Is, yeah. Four foot in the pedal, which yep. is uh, really uh, unusual considering that we do have a number of, of stop marks. Uh, of course, here. you can couple the other uh, divisions down as needed. Only at eight foot, you can't couple any of us on right. down four foot. Mm -hmm. uh, the sub base uh, is an independent stop, 16 foot, it's a stopped. We have a 16-foot viola, speaking of more strings in this organ. Yes, uh, a 16-foot viola, and I think the cello is, comes mm -hmm. out of that too. Really nice uh, a solo uh, a stop. I mean, if you uh, uh, play something. Uh, uh, uh But I think uh, in those days they would rather use that to brighten the otherwise rather dark uh, 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 dive pace. Well, and we have a couple of mutations here that are wired mutations, and the, the literature specifically said to help clear, clarify the to base. To clarify the base. adding a ten and two thirds, which yeah. comes out of the swell board, and, yeah. and the five and a third, uh, I think, also comes out of the swell board. I had an interesting registration here. This is the violon, the sixteen, with that uh, eight-foot uh, cello extension uh, at the Borden and uh, 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 just the, the quint five and a third. And this is a rather interesting, almost a contemporary sound with that uh, 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 mutation. Almost like a little reed uh, or so with, with these overtones. I'm in to be yeah. proud, yes, that's very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of Jean Guyou, he oh, loved yeah. these mutations. Yeah. So there's not enough mutations. We're picking and choosing of them now. Yeah. So we have, yeah, the 60-foot Borden is available there. Mm -hmm. And then um, the tuba actually comes down. We were just talking about this in another organ. The main big reed continues down in the 16 in the pedal. And that's what we have here in the trombone. So that ends here with the eight foot. Uh... Bombastic, really. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's called it's trombone. It's uh, heavy bass there. Yeah. If you mix that with the big uh, open wood, you're going to get a, a lot of rumble. Yeah, we, sure. have, we do have a resultant there, 32 foot, so you can help. Right. You've got you the 10 and 2 thirds, and you've got a resultant, so you can have all kinds of rumble down there. The so bottom. here's our uh, uh, little rumble uh, effect here. Uh, let's add that here. Microphones, do they? <laughs> there's one little secret um, I can tell you about. Of course, actually, I should mention there's a whole prepared for division here. They hoped someday there'd be an echo division. We don't know where they thought that would be, possibly up in the clear story windows or something. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. So the stops are here, and Wicks put them back in case something ever happens in the future. Oh, well, that, that was part of the original the console, original but console, there were yeah. never any pipes in associated. 1935, uh -huh. they were already thinking of they would do something. Um, the one thing that is different uh, from the original console is we do have a Sendine control system, so they had to put in a control panel. But now we have lots of memory levels, and yeah. so mm -hmm. they come in. The pistons are a little different, but for the most part, the layout of everything matches the old console originally. There's a blank here in the choir, um, and the dedicatory recitalist, who happened to be your predecessor, uh, wanted uh, the tuba to show up in the choir. So if you put down this blank knob, you get the great tuba. Uh -huh. Something we have you requested. One, two, 
three, four more blank four, four more blanks. So uh, there's blank. definitely. Uh, Which is, they were already thinking there might be some expansion to the right. in places where you might add more reads, more color, something. But yeah. Um, so yeah, there was definitely some plans for the future here. One could definitely ex put the eight foot tuba here in, yeah. in, the, uh, in there as well. Yeah. Well, and given the Sindyne control system, it'd be very easy to go in to and program that. Which yeah. is how they got the, the tuba on there. Yeah, that's a, that's a of, wonderful system. system. Just, yeah. Yeah.
Before we go look around inside the organ, I need to stop a moment and uh, offer some thanks to some people who helped make this video possible, uh, much more than I could with just a line of text at the end of the video. Um, first of all, to Christopher Soar. Christopher provided us with some historic research and gave us some materials uh, to help explain some of the story of this instrument, so that was very helpful. But he also helped with some last minute tuning uh, and helped make this video possible. So thank you very much, Christopher. He couldn't be here today, uh, but we hope to see Christopher in an upcoming video very soon. I would also like to offer my sincere thanks to Scott Wick and the crew at the Wicks Organ Company. Uh, they spent some days here uh, getting the organ in tip-top shape. It had suffered a little bit of pandemic disuse, uh, and so they worked very hard to get it sounding its best. It was really interesting to see the grandson of the founder of the company uh, working on this instrument, keeping this 86-year-old organ up and playing. So I can't recommend them enough. If you uh, have a pipe organ and need maintenance and repair or tuning, you're in uh, Missouri, Illinois, maybe even western Indiana, uh, give them a call. There's a link down in the description to their website. Uh, I can't recommend their, the service crew at Wicks Organ Company enough. This is not a paid announcement. They did not pay me to say this. That is just my opinion after seeing them work firsthand last week. So with those now, uh, let's go take a look inside the instrument. So to get into the organ, we come around to the side and there is a door right here on the side of the case. We open that up and we are seeing the pedal pipes and we're underneath the swell. There's a ladder stored inside, so we'll take that out. Helps us get up into the door. There are convenient walk boards throughout the organ. We see some of the pedal board in there in front of us. The lower pipes are back behind it, and the 16-foot open is back behind it on the floor. It's really hard to see from here. You can see the very large regulators there for the pedal chests. And that box contains the tremolo, which actually goes up to the swell up above us. There's regulators for the swell. That's the bottom of the swell chest there. Pedal violone pipes are here. We squeeze behind them down the walk board. Swell motor for the swell. And then we're here in the middle of the organ where there's a ladder. Ladder goes up to various levels. Swell on that side, that's the choir box. And some more random 16 foot board and pipes stuck back here. Look underneath, we see the two regulators, one for each of the two chests in the choir. And then more open wood pipes around the choir box. We creep around to the side and we can see the top of it. How you tune the ones in the back, I have no idea. So there are tuning panels in the front of the choir box. When removing them, we see the clarinet and the French horn. So you can easily tune these reeds without having to actually get into the box. And this is fairly convenient, just standing height. Now behind me there are some Borden pipes, and I want to show that this is the original Wix chest, even though they've been modified. Uh, each pipe has its own toe board, so if you need to open the action, you can just move the one pipe. Now if we look close, we can see where the horseshoe clip wiring used to attach and go into the action, but uh, they have replaced it all with just modern wiring, so um, it's just the one cable going in instead of each little loose wire. We have some chimes there right behind them, mounted on the front of the case, and up above us we see some of the great chests. We're going to go in and look at the choir, so we're going to step up on this walk board, which gives us a little leg up here. We can see the 16-foot uh, reed to our right. And then this door folds in half so that it'll fit in the tight space we're in here. And when we look in this door, we see that all we get are the French horn and clarinet pipes. That's what's right here in front. The French horn trebles squeezed in between them. And there is a, a ladder with a platform to help you somehow reach those lower pipes if you need to. The eight foot pipes of this division are, are in between. In between us and the rest of the pipes. To get to those, we have to close this door. see more 16-foot pipes stashed here and there. That 
we open the back door of the choir box and we can see the rest of the pipes in this division. Strings in the back. And our flutes are up here in the front. And again, a ladder and a platform in case you want to be able to reach those somehow. Now up in the back of the chamber, it's got a little ledge here, and that allows you to access the bottom of the great chest in case you need to work on it, but I would never hope to have to work up there. So all the eight-foot pipes in this division are there in between the reeds and the rest of the flues. And if you look at them, they actually go up above what is the bottom of the great chest. So we have a very strange shaped box here in order to accommodate all of the wind chests and access to them. All right, now we are going to uh, head up the ladder, which takes us up to the swell and the grate. Now we're here at the front of the swell and we have to creep down under here to get to the tuning panels at the front of the box. We are underneath the facade chest and remove the tuning panel and we can see the trumpet and the oboe. This is the treble end. There's another panel for the bass end down there as well. This is much more cramped than the choir tuning area. Okay, now we're carefully stepping out onto the walk board because we're several feet up in the air now. And we're stepping up into the swell division. There's a single door here. And we start in the front over the reeds. There's our trumpet and oboe. And then right next to the oboe is that three rank uh, mixture. Very skinny little pipes. It's even indicated on the rack board of the chest as to which rank is which, which is the only place in the organ that such indication has been used. Now we're up on the walk board here, and this is where you have to get to tune the Vox Humana, which is up on the wall. We've seen another Wix organ with a similar uh, positioning of the Vox Humana. It's enclosed in a box, which someone has left a little bit open. I guess they wanted it to be a little louder than completely closed. Now, while you're up here, of course, you can reach, ideally, all of the rest of this forest of pipes. To aid in getting to some of them, though, the other ladder is hinged. As I try to do all this by myself, there's a latch that will keep it in the upright position so that you can, I guess, squeeze down to reach some of those mixture pipes. Quite the forest of pipes in here with all the eight foots against the back wall. As we go out, we have to always watch your head because that Vox Humana chest actually blocks some of the opening and it's a great place to accidentally run into it. Now with that closed, we are going to go up the ladder a little bit. And we see these uh, sideways mounted regulators. They were like that in the original organ. And we're at a walkboard here that gives us access to the great principal chorus, which is all exposed and on its own chest. We can step up here to reach the tuba. We can see we're all open to the ceiling of the church here. Now this area right here is actually the top of the choir box. That's where we would stand to reach that tuba. See, choir shades, top of the box, and the great box is right back there. We're going to start by squeezing back here, and we see the top of those pipes we were looking at downstairs. There's the 16 foot. And now we are looking in the great box. Very similar arrangement, except lots of pipes way down below the opening of the chamber. Board and pipes across the back. 
yeah, very tricky to actually reach all of these pipes for tuning. The good news is they don't go out of tune very easily. Just looking down the back of the walkboard, and we can see where the wind comes into the organ. And there's the tallest of the 16 foot open right there. And you can kind of peek back and see some of the other pipes. They're right up against the back of the swell box. So it's really hard to see in there, it's a bit dark. And on the bottom of the 16 foot where you tune those is down a little bit lower. Now we're going to step up this ladder and we will be on the top of the choir box here so we can reach this tuba. We can also, ideally with a stick maybe, uh, reach these facade pipes for tuning. They go all the way down to the lowest one. This is the famed tuba. There's 10 offset pipes, and then uh, A-sharp and B there are straight, and the rest of them are all hooded. Now, that ladder we came up continues, goes up a little bit higher. So from up there, we can look all the way down. And you can use this to access the top of the swell box should you ever need to tune these pipes. It allows you to reach the tuners on the facade pipes, but let's hope that's a, you know, once in a century sort of thing that you need to do. All right, making our way back out, we're down on the walkboard again. Squeezing behind the pedal V alone. been carefully marked to make sure we leave it in the organ. It's really hard to get in and out without it. So we're going to put it back in there. And that's the tour of the chambers. Now there's a bit more if we go back this way towards the tower. There's some stairs we can go up and through a locked door. We find where the church stores a lot of stuff. Every church has a room like this. Now this is inside the tower of the church. As you can see, it continues to go way up. But we're actually going to go down. We're going back down to the level of the gallery. In this room, we find our nice new blower. was installed new with a rebuild of the organ and these new static regulators and that's that big wind line we saw with the grate and then actually the grate regulator is in here and that's the grate tremolo as well there are two relay boxes uh, there's one right there and then over on the other side we have one that has the swell and pedal things and it, it also has this unique wix feature it has switched mixtures each rank of the mixture can be turned off so that it's easy to tune just one rank by itself now people have mixed feelings about these some people say they don't work right because uh, you're changing the wind flow or you're changing the how the pipes interact with each other um, i personally think tuning the organ is so unlike playing the organ that we're really lucky it's ever in tune at all so Horst, thank you so much for demonstrating the 1935 Willis Wicks organ here in the church of uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori, this beautiful building that's been restored amazingly after the fire, uh, and a really unique organ. Yeah, certainly a wonderful instrument uh, with beautiful sounds uh, that match the beauty of this building. I mean, if you just look at the stained glass windows and the architecture, I, I think it's a matching instrument for this magnificent church. It, it's truly unique, and most people wouldn't know that's a Wix organ when they come in here uh, absolutely and, not. and look at it. So, and we're glad to be able to share it with you. So now, this I know won't be the last time you'll appear in an Organ Media Foundation video, but it'll probably be the last time here in St. Louis because you're leaving us, I hear. That is true. Uh, in two weeks from now, I'm actually uh, moving and I've accepted a position uh, uh, in Detroit uh, with the Archdiocese and at the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, uh, and similar to what I've been doing here uh, uh, in slightly 
cooler temperatures, I hope. <laughs> right now I settle for uh, five degrees less and 10% less humidity. <laughs> well, thank you for, for enduring St. Louis weather for the years you've been here with us. We look forward to you doing some scouting and we're going to come find some Detroit area organs. I hope you will find us some interesting things to come see and you'll see him again uh, demonstrating some of these wonderful instruments like this one. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you know when there will be new videos uploaded. We're trying to upload them every week. Uh, we hope to bring you some new videos very soon. Uh, and remember for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, visit our three streaming stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. And to help support the Organ Media Foundation and keep us making videos, uh, anyone can do that and become a sponsor by going to organ.media and clicking on support. It's easy. You can do it for just one dollar uh, and it'll help us uh, make more videos. So thank you again, Horst. Thank you. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you soon.